So CFA Institute has started a flexible payment option or basically a loan or an EMI option. Uh, they've done a tie up with a firm basically that uh, is Eduvance. Of course, you can take loan from any entity. Uh, so let me explain it to you in a very, very simple manner. So what happens is I'll explain the sheet in a while. So the idea is very simple. You can take a loan of 6 to 24 months. The institute has done some kind of a tie up with a company. You can avail loan from anybody. If you want, you can avail loan from the company that the institute has uh, given the details for. And I'll provide the link as well to you. You will get a loan between 6 months to 24 months. The loan cannot be more than a 2 year loan. The loan cannot be less than a 6 month loan. Once you take the loan, so the process I'll explain it to you. So you generate an invoice on the CFA Institute's website. The loan can be for a new CFA level 1 student or a level 2 student or a level 3 exam. It can be if you're retaking the exam or deferred, uh, uh, not deferred, on deferral fee and exam center change, you can't take a loan on that amount. It's only for the exam registration you can take the amount. I'll explain it to you in the details. So you go to the CFA Institute website, you generate your invoice. Using that invoice, you apply for the loan on this particular company's website. I'll share this link and you put in the details. For example, let's say I'm looking at early bird registration or standard. So if it's early bird registration, the amount is $14.75. Let's say if it's standard, it's $18.29. I hope you're registering early. It does not make sense to put in that kind of money. Let's say I'm going to put in a website ID, Ashwini Bajaj one at gmail.com. Uh, I'll start a convenient date, etc. You can put in the invoice number that you've generated from the CFA Institute's website already. The rate of exchange over here is given as 82.75 and this rate will keep on changing and the actual amount may vary. So this is just an approximate number that is provided. You put in your name, your details and you can always call them for further information or mail them for further information, right? I haven't gone forward from this step on this EMI platform on this education loan platform. So now what you do is once you do this, the amount is going to be released by this platform to the CFA Institute directly. It will not come to your bank account and then go to the Institute's bank account. Even if you take a loan from somewhere else, either you can take the loan from them and then make the payment to the Institute. Of course, in that case, there is no uh, relationship with the Institute as such. And second, if you take a loan from somebody where they will not pay your bank account directly, you can give them the invoice from the institute. They can pay the invoice directly to the institute. How to pay the invoice with the CFA Institute? That details you will have on the CFA Institute's website. I'm not getting into that. Or let me start with a calculator. You can put in your name if you want away. I'll just put AB for the time being. The fees, I'm going to put the lower one, 1475. I've put in the exchange rate from this website. There could be a couple of percent variation, so you be prepared for it. The loan tenure has to be between 6 and 24. Let's say I'll start with a 14 month loan first. And you will notice that the entire data is going to change automatically. I have put in the start, I'll have to put in the start date of the loan and the annual interest rate. This might also vary. Right now it is somewhere close to 8.5%. This loan amount may vary. Based on this, the entire table will be automatically filled up. Even if you do a 12 month, you would see that this is going to get automatically filled up. So you have 12 EMI payments. These are the payment dates. This is the beginning balance of the loan. The total amount you have to take is 1,22,056. This is your beginning balance. Your EMI is 10,646 based on this data. All the other information is going to be auto-filled. This is the monthly payment you have to make throughout all the 12 months. Out of 10,646, the principal portion repaid is this much and 865 is the interest component. So out of your balance of 1,22,000 of loan, you repaid 9,000 something and your ending balance is 1,12,000. And over a 12 month period, your outstanding loan balance will decline to zero. So for a 1,22,000 loan, you end up paying 10,646 per month for 12 months. Your total interest paid over 12 months is 5,692 and total loan amount is this much. This is not the loan amount exactly, the total amount paid would be this much actually, technically. 1,27,749 is the amount paid. So out of 1,27,749 that you will pay in 12 months, 96% went to principal repayment, 4% to interest. This 4% is not reflective of the interest cost. Your interest cost is 8.5 per annum. 
understand but since you're paying principal regularly your principal balance is declining on a monthly basis you're understanding say for example if i increase this to 20 you will see that my total interest shot up from 5000 something to 92 81 and my total interest is now 7 percent of the total payment i'm making is going to the interest component if i make it 24 this is going to be 8 percent of the total amount and i'll have 11,000 as my interest. So this is basically the cost you're bearing over your loan tenure and your monthly payment goes down. It came down from almost, let's say it is 5,500 now. It came down from 10,000 to 5,000 by doubling my period from 12 to 24. So you can try different permutation combinations. You can see what is the amount and how you're allocating that. And you can check what is your affordability in terms of the payment, the PMT, the monthly EMI part. We'll just quickly go through a few questions. This is directly taken from the CFA Institute's website. We'll just quickly discuss this. So there's an EMI option. This is only for India. And the aspirants can take monthly installments at low interest rates, just the way you take for colleges, etc. So the CFA Institute also is providing this option. There is no collateral required. It's digitally done. You don't have to go to the uh, bank or something. It's an online uh, 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 lending platform and there is no collateral required. It's only for citizens in India. So this option EMI is not available across the globe. It's only for Indian citizens between this age bracket and they could be either a full time student or an employee. But in case of students, they need to have a financial co-applicant. These details will be will have to be filled up once you go to the website and you put in the details for availing the loan. The loan uh, tenure can only be between 6 to 24 months, we've already discussed. There is one partner right now, you obviously can take loan from anybody, but this is an authorized partner that the CF Institute has. If you get better rates from somewhere, it's up to you, there's no problem. The EMI can be taken for all the three exam levels and registration, but it cannot be done for other courses by CF Institute, like an ESG course, so there is no option for availing loan for that. Scholarship students will not get the loan facility and deferral and rescheduling fees cannot be paid by taking a loan. The loan is for registration for level 1 and exam registration for level 2, 3. Level 1 exam registration is included in your registration. For EMI, you go to the CFA Institute, select the invoice payment method and the invoice payment method and then you have a dedicated page over here which I just showed you on this website, this one. You can put in your invoice number and the details and it will directly make the payment to the CFA Institute. There is no collateral, no security needed at all. EMI request has to be on this particular website if you are availing a loan from this platform. And even if you have taken loan for CFA level 1 and your loan is a 24 month loan, but after 6 months you've cleared CFA level 1 and you want to take a new loan for CFA level 2 while level 1 loan is going on, that is allowed. You can take another new loan for another level while the loan for previous level is going on. The full amount is going to be paid to the institute for the registration, not to you. It will not come to your bank account. And if you have any challenges, you can always put an email or a call given on these numbers on this website to the loan partner. If you cancel your exam registration, in that case, if the CFA Institute would have refunded, so say for example, I'm a student, I did not take loan and I cancel the exam. In that case, the CFA Institute will pay me the refund. Of course, there are rules of the Institute. It will not pay you a refund in under normal circumstances. You'll have to go through the refund process. And in case you've taken a loan and now you want a refund from the Institute, if your refund is allowed or accepted by the Institute, then your EMI is going to be squared off and you'll have to work out with the Institute and the EMI partner for that. It's applicable only certain circumstances. Otherwise, refund on CFA Institute website is not possible. But in case it allows you, then your loan can be taken care of and you might get some refund from the Eduvan's company that is into this EMI part. If you do not appear for the exam, you will still have to make your EMI payment. Once you take the loan, the loan is separate and the institute is separate. For example, if you default on your loan amount, then the loan partner, the Eduvan's the finance company is going to be dealing with you. Even if you default does not mean that the CFA Institute will not give you your result or it will withhold your result, that will not happen. It is just a facility. It's just, just think about it as a very individual, you've taken a loan. Now that loan is becomes a separate entity and the Institute works separately, right? EMI uh, is not linked to the CFA exam. 
So the repayment schedule, even if you defer the exam, for example, I was supposed to take the exam now. Even if I defer the exam to six months, your EMI does not get deferred. Your EMI schedule will go on exactly the way it was supposed to be. If you fail to make the necessary EMI payment, as I was telling you, the exam registration or the results will not be cancelled. Your EMI is separate. It has got nothing to do with the institute once you have availed the EMI. So your EMI payment is your problem with the banking company and it has got nothing to do with the CFA Institute later. Another thing you need to remember is that if Eduance fails to make the payment to the CFA Institute in deadline, it is going to be a challenge for you and you may miss the deadline. So if the CFA Institute deadline is on particular date, let's say the 10th, please don't go to Eduan's website, etc. on the 10th and get the loan approval, etc. done. Please do that at least. I'm not sure exactly about the 10 timeline, but I would want at least one or one and a half weeks, 10 days before the deadline. I should be able to process and get those done because once you get everything approved and all, then Eduan's is going to make the payment to the institute. So if you get the loan avail, availed on the 10th and institute deadline is on the 10th, it will create a problem. And you will spend a lot of time coordinating between the loan company and the institute, whether they receive the payment, not receive the payment, etc. Please do not stretch it to the last moment. And uh, you can, of course, take loan from anybody. It is not that the institute is promoting this particular financial institution, this banking partner or something. It is just that maybe banks may not were giving you uh, loans at a higher rate or the banks were not willing to give you loan because of this partnership. You know for sure that this person or this entity is going to be providing you a loan at this particular rate and the payment will directly go to the CFA Institute's website. So it is going to be absolutely up to you whether you want to take loan from this entity or somewhere else. If you get a better rate and a better loan facility and loan term somewhere else, you're more than welcome to do so. It is not being promoted over here, but it's just an extra facility that is being added to for the Indian students. So it is absolutely up to you whether to avail or not to avail. This is the amount of information I have. For any further details, you will have to write a mail to the CFA Institute and with respect to the payment etc terms, you'll have to write a mail to this organization, right? So I will not be able to answer further questions on this for the time being. If I have any other information, I'll keep you posted and I'll keep you updated. But this is the detail in terms of payment of EMI.